Okay. So um, it looks like first on our agenda is Youth Poet Laureate updates and Poet Laureate updates. So I'll pass it over to Garrett, Jesse, are, are you all the folks on that? Uh, yeah, I've got some stuff to share um, about the Youth Poet Laureate uh, search. Um, we haven't issued the like official start of that search yet in terms of a press release, um, but I've worked on a, I've worked out a schedule, a tentative schedule, and also started to put together um, parameters for what that uh, search and competition might look like. Um, as part of that, and also I've been, you know, I've discussed it with Brian a little bit about um, what our approach is going to be. And our intention is to really like lock down what it is before we start really spreading the word about it, just so that um, everybody is on the same page about what that might mean. Um, one of the things that was really important to me and to Brian is that I speak to Rio, who is the former uh, Youth Poet Laureate, just to get their um, impressions about how it went because they were the first uh, Youth Poet Laureate in Northampton. And I wanted to get their perspective on how everything went and if there was anything that they thought needed to uh, be improved or anything that they thought they really liked about the process. Um, so I did get to speak to Rio. Uh, we went back and forth for a while, but we finally got to talk. And um, and Rio was really glad to be picked um, for as the Youth Poet Laureate, um, but they found that um, they, Maybe it was just because they're really humble, but they were they felt that they were maybe undeserving of the title. Um, but you know, they were in eighth grade at the time, and I think it's maybe how any of us would react if we were elected something like Youth Poet Laureate in eighth grade. Um, but they uh, you know really enjoyed the process. Um, a couple, it took me a little while to get any criticisms out of them because um, you know they were very nice about it. But after some digging, I did discover that. Um, they felt that they just weren't uh, like communicated with enough. Um, and they felt a little uh, like unaware of what was going on for a lot of it, which is not a direct criticism of anybody. It's just something that I wanna make sure that we're aware of this time around. Um, one of the things that they said they did is they, you know, they made a final project, which is like part of what the whole Youth Poet Laureate thing is. They do a big final project at the end. Um, and they just didn't know what happened to it after they sent it off to the Arts Council. So um, it was that. And then um, one of the, the draws that we would like to have as part of the search and the competition is that they are going to be encouraged to publish a chapbook of their own work. And apparently that kind of like fell by the wayside. Um, I don't know exactly what the context was in terms of, uh, you know, how close to the pandemic this was when this happened. Um, or what was going on with the Arts Council at the time. I know there's some history there, um, but it feels like after talking to Rio for a while that they felt maybe a little uh, a little um, under under paid attention to, if that makes sense. It's kind of a weird way to say that. Um, so one of the goals that I'm going to make sure to adhere to in this process is not even not just to, uh, make the search broad enough that we appeal to all sorts of youth from all over the city, but also that once somebody is awarded the post, that we really follow up and really make use of them. Um, and, you know, the intention is that they would speak at a couple of different events, and then they get the honorary title, they get to do a chapbook of their work, and then they also do like a final project. Um, so we want to make sure to walk them through all the parts of that and make sure that they know that they're appreciated and also, um, you know, just be aware, you know, like be aware of our communication with them and make them feel like they're a part of something instead of like, you know, just getting a phone call every once in a while, like, hey, do you want to come do this thing and read a poem, you know? Um, and like I say, it's not a criticism. I actually don't know much about the process last time. So I, you know, it's not, I'm not meaning to sound critical here. If anything, um, just sort of listing things that I want to be sure that we're aware of in, in this coming year's process. Um, and I feel like there was one other thing that I was going to mention. Um, oh, yeah. At one point, the, uh, you know, I learned that the, the, there's some tutelage from the Poet Laureate to the Youth Poet Laureate, which is one of the bonuses. Uh, the, youth, the Youth Poet Laureate gets to speak to the Poet Laureate and get some, um, you know, guidance and, and leadership from them. I don't know that that relationship was really fleshed out last time, 
or if the if the search for the poet laureate really you know included a stipulation that they help the youth poet laureate but i really want to try to explore what that relationship is and i don't necessarily want to put like you know rigid parameters on it because it should ultimately be up to them um how they want to feel like they want to interact if they do want to interact but i think a big thing for the youth poet laureate should be that they speak to the poet laureate and they get something from that relationship because you know it sounds like it could be a really beneficial thing for both parties involved so that um i think it's important to set that up and set expectations for that when we're searching for the poet laureate as well so that going into it everybody kind of knows that that's a big part of the uh big part of the process too um so yeah that's just a quick summary of what i've been thinking about and what i've been up to uh, thanks, Eric. Yeah, we should touch base and talk about that aspect of it, because I think that that is uh, very important um, to include moving forward. Um, very small update on the Poet Laureate search. Um, I was able to uh, finally reach out and hear back from Matt Donovan, who has agreed to uh, come on in the advisory um, uh, as a prior Poet Laureate. Um, so we can I can start moving forward with actually getting everyone together to uh, start the um, search process. So hopefully in the next uh, few weeks, I'll be able to have a schedule set in place and um, call everyone together so that we can uh, begin in earnest. Yeah, Jesse, I would actually like to talk to you about that, too, because I don't know if there was like consideration last time. And this is just me speaking out of ignorance, like I just don't know how the process worked. But if there is any consideration of both of these things happening in tandem, do the announcements happen in tandem or are they just kind of their own thing and they just sort of end up in the same place by taking different routes? I don't know, but I think it's worth exploring the relationship between the two searches and seeing like, you know, if it's worth combining them in some ways or just keeping them separate. I don't know. It's worth a conversation. Yeah, I think um, I think we should definitely uh, have that conversation. We can um, set up a meeting and to talk about that because i think you know the fact that they're happening potentially so close to each other now might make sense to kind of combine them in some way or at least um be in more communication um across the board about it yeah for sure also i know I, i'm sorry to interrupt but i'm kind of the only uh person doing the youth poet laureate thing right now so if anybody in the zoom or citywide would like to lend some help or if anybody is part of the poetry community you know locally or at large i'd like to hear from you um i have a little bit of a background in you know literature i guess but not really poetry at all um and i'm looking to really tap into the community and and sort of use them to uh to expand the search and um and yeah so any insight anybody here has um you can get my information from uh from brian and we can talk thanks likewise i think anyone who has experience or interest in youth outreach youth engagement even if you don't have a background in poetry or writing or literature but you know know how to tap into where the kids are at um that could be a really great skill set and I would encourage you, if you're not already on a subcommittee or working on a project, to get in touch with um, Garrett or Jesse to, to support the Poet Laureate project. Any questions or other comments on Poet Laureate? Okay. Brian, do you want to share... Um, LCC updates, or do you want to table that until you have good service? I could talk about it. Uh, can everybody hear me? Yes. I just don't have video. If I turn it on, it's just the background. Um, the LCC updates is that everybody got mailed their checks. So that's good. So thank you everybody who participated in the LCC grant process. Uh, I think there are a lot of happy artists in town and uh, yeah, it was great. So we got it done in time this year, which was I'm very happy with. So that's all it for LCC updates. Yes, Garrett, go ahead. Um, 
I, I'm wondering, I know that at one point, I think I read a press release about like the different, um, the different projects that we funded last year. Um, is there any sort of like digest of the stuff that benefited from the LCC grant process? What do you mean by digest? Well, is there like a, a resource or like a way to know like this is where the money went um, in like sort of a public, like from a public relations standpoint? It's yeah, there's a press release. Yeah. Okay. There is a, so there is a press release. Yeah. We do it in, in uh, conjunction with uh, the mayor's office. And then maybe I didn't post it to the website yet. Maybe I haven't updated the website yet with the, the new grant, but I'll take a look at that when I have uh, computer access. It's online, Brian. Okay. And I think there was newspaper coverage a little bit, and it's it's also always goes on our website, just the list of recipients. Of yeah, I have grant. a list of all the recipients since like 2012 on our website. I'm sure it's difficult to find because it's a blogger, but I can send, when I have a little bit better service, I can email you guys that list of all the past grant recipients. Um, and then there, most of them do a pretty decent job of getting us information ahead of time. And then we post it on our social, but um, I think there could be a better you know, connection between the two besides just the press release, but we should just maybe discuss an arts reception again um, with all of our grant recipients. And then they can, you know, maybe they can present their projects. Because that's always good outreach. Um, yeah, just for folks who might be new in years past, um, the Arts Council would host an artist reception where anyone who received a grant was invited to share more about their projects, how they were using their grant money and just get to know the council and get to know one another. So if anyone is interested in spearheading that as a project, um, it's definitely something that can happen and we'll need probably two to three council members to coordinate it um, if this group decides to do so. Um. Any other questions about LCC grants? Yeah, I had a question. Where, where does this reception typically take place? Uh, usually 33 Holly in like the the upstairs room, the multi-purpose. What is it? I forgot the name of it. Um, and we set up like the 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 the, the benches. And then we have projection, and usually we invite somebody from the MCC as a representative or two people. And then um, I'll talk a little bit. The MCC rep will talk, the chairperson, anybody else from the council will talk. And then there's different ways we can format it. You know, there's like light snacks and drinks. And then we can pick some, we can either highlight some projects for people to present, or we can just do a, like a straight up Q&A. Um, you know, we can do a workshop on how to apply to the grants. So there's different ways to engage. We can also engage in a different way, Anna. We can like, um, have some of the artists that we, that receive an LCC grant to do like a, a small portion of their project in like one of the rooms there and have people come in and engage with it. You know what I'm saying? Like a performance or a visual art or whatever. There's So if there's an artist reception committee of like three council members that want to get together and, and, and figure out how to do like good outreach to the community of artists that receive grants from us that, you know, there's a different formats, but that's things we've done in the past. Is that venue available now or what's no, not thing? those. I think one or two rooms are available, but I don't know for sure because I was just at two different places. I think half of that building is closed, um, but there's other places we can have it. And does anyone know when it will reopen? Uh, I think with construction, Anna, it's like always going to cost more and take longer. So I would say that I, at least half that building will be closed for most of 2023. Any more Is questions about the LCC? What did you say? Is anyone interested in forming a committee to work on an artist reception 
or like an artist engagement program for folks who receive grants? So what would be the time frame for that? When would you want that? When or when is that typically done? Up to you for discussion on what makes the most sense in terms of planning and timeline and outreach. Um, but I would imagine just before the next grant cycle, Brian. And that's in May. Yeah. I, no, oh, I that was thinking would, before we would, we would, the October one. Yeah. Oh, the LCC grant. So we're talking about LCC. That's not LCC, Anna. It's our own grant round. Oh, um, okay. They're two different grant rounds. So oh, okay. with this particular one, I think Danielle hit it on the head, which is like, there's a lot of interest in the fall for the LCC process, because obviously people are applying. And at the height of the interest in the LCC process, I think it's the best time to engage with artists, have them come in and ask questions or whatever, however we want to do it. Um, we can also, oh, I got to move because Sebastian can't sleep. Hold on. I don't know where to go. So I see in the chat, Jada might be interested. Anna, are you interested? Yeah, I might be interested. Um, and it might be nice to have it in conjunction with the announcement of the next cycle so that uh, people who are thinking of applying would get a sense of what's been done in the past and how how it works. I would be interested in helping out. Um, I'm not sure I can take on the full organization. Uh, was, uh, definitely would love to be a part of that somehow. So so maybe Aliana, Anna, and Jada can plan to connect on email or Zoom or whatever works for you all. And if it if you would like to give a little check in at the next meeting in a month, we can do that or two months, whatever feels good. So you can do some brainstorming and then come back to the whole council with your ideas, suggestions, roadblocks, okay. all of that. We could also use the city hall hearing room where we uh, we normally meet, not on Zoom for like the artist reception if it's a smaller affair um, because it doesn't cost any money to, to use. And uh, there's projection there, but it wouldn't be a performative, but it would be more of like probably more of a feedback workshop, you know, Q&A type of situation. And it would have like a limited, we'd have to probably do more of a like reservations RSVP type of thing, because it'd be like a limited number of spots we could fit inside there because for capacity reasons. In the past, how many people have attended this event? It depends. I've been at one where there was like 15 artists and one that had like 30 artists. It depends on like. And what about know. public? What? What about public or, or is, is it not open to the, the public? It is. It's open to everybody, but we, we, we specifically invite artists that have applied or received LCC grants. So what has been the community attendance? How many community members have just turned up? Like, again, it's like between, you know, 15 and 30, Anna. Okay, so it's not massive. No. Okay. And uh, we can really also do, you know, we can just invite people. We can do it any way we want. We can just invite people we gave grants to, uh, to show off their projects, like almost like an art salon. Um maybe the top scoring or whatever. There's like a million different ways to do yeah. outreach. Uh, whatever you think the most effective is, we can just have a big party, like whatever, you know, we can hire a couple, you know, artists to do something and have a party, invite everybody and just do like a mixer. Does so, anyone know if the senior center um, is open to this kind of activity? And yeah, yeah, for sure. They rent. Yeah, yeah, we can do it there. I mean, that's a nice big venue, isn't it? Yeah, I would just recommend if we are planning to do an event that is in conjunction with announcing a grant round, if that's part of the purpose, I think it's really important that outreach is broad and wide and not just to folks that have, you know, been yeah. awarded grants in the past, but that yeah. could be a separate program, right? There's something to be said for bringing the artists who received grants together to sharing their work with one another and celebrating that they are grant recipients. I think that that's one avenue 
to go. But if we're going in the direction of, you know, encouraging people to apply for grants, that is a big outreach project that I would encourage folks to be like very mindful of, especially given um, some past feedback around that. Is, that Danielle, you think there's a way that we can do both because of the, the, the opportunity for mentorship? I think that if the purpose is to encourage folks to apply and, and share with them the grant, especially folks that maybe haven't heard about it before, then that is the target audience. And part of the program can be having artists share what their application process was like or what their projects were like to inspire and, and give ideas. But in terms of like, if, if that's the audience, then it really can't be, um, and it's gonna be in person, it can't be in city hall. Um, it needs to be in a much larger venue. There needs to be a lot of marketing, a lot of communications, a lot of outreach, probably some partnership. Um, what if it's hybrid that event. though? Um, if it's, Isn't that I mean, I, accessibility if it's hybrid? This, we've done this online. Yeah. Well, we've done this online, right? Yeah. So yeah. I would say if we're trying to access as many people as possible and encourage them to apply, then we can just do an, a virtual program. If the I would love to do it in to person. Connect That's people, just we can me. Still do that and put them in breakout rooms. I would, I would like to do it in person and just live yeah. stream it. <laughs> the reason I actually asked initially if there was some sort of digest or like way to see all of the projects that we funded in a year part of the reason for that is because i want to know like if the artists get to know each other you know and like a press release is one thing but like bringing everybody together as like an art community of northampton sounds really like really helpful to me and, and really beneficial to the community so you know i i also would be uh into helping to plan this event but i kind of would prefer that it's like maybe less stuffy and just like more fun for the artists to go to and be a part of to like you know sort of bolster the community a little bit but yeah, that's just your sense yeah. it could be a lot of fun um you know there'll and there'd be musicians and actors and um artists and you know yeah. it could be um, really very spectacular so okay maybe the four of you can do a little bit of initial brainstorming and you know come and bet you can come up with 10 amazing program ideas and then, you know, bring your your favorite two or three back to the the group to to discuss. And whether that's at the next meeting or the one after, totally fine. But just let us know so that we can make sure it's an agenda item. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, Thank you. So much. Sorry. Thank you. Of course. On the topic of the LCC, we did receive a. Um, a letter from Megan Allen, who was a grant recipient, just updating us on the project and asking for permission to like make these changes. So I have the letter up here, but hopefully folks have had a chance to read it. If not, I'll give you a moment. Um, and then I'll ask if anyone would like to, you know, make a motion to either approve or deny this request. I have a kind of historical question. Um, this seems to be a fairly significant change from the um, original uh, proposal. As have there been um, requests, change requests like this in the past that has been this significant, or is this something that's kind of you know, a first one for us. This is probably going to be like a, a first one for, for my for my memory, but I could be wrong. Okay, just wondering if we're in slightly uncharted waters. Thanks. So just to clarify, there are no rules about uh, sort of pitching one idea of being awarding a grant and then completely changing it. 
There are, there are. Well, they seem to have given reason why they can't do whatever it was their original intention was and come up with an, a workable or alternative. And um, I think that's pretty praiseworthy that they actually went to the trouble of doing that, uh, given that they can't do the original um, uh, presentation. So I, I, I think I don't see any reason to deny it. I agree with Anna in a way sometimes things happen and the creativity has to flow and it has to adjust to the situation we're given with. Why not? So do we put it to a vote now? Is that uh, first and second or something like that, guys? I, I, I'm in agreement too. Yeah, somebody so, just has to- um... Someone can make a motion to vote to approve the request or you can make a motion to vote to deny the request and then it would be seconded. I can't. Okay, I move to approve the request. And I second. Great, so can we take a vote please? We've got Jada, Garrett, Eliana, Anna, Kay, my, um, Pete and Eamon. Eamon votes yes to approve. Peter is uh, yes. Okay, so I think it's a unanimous yes. Um, thank you. Thank you, everybody. Uh, I'm sorry, someone's, okay. Pete, I, your hand is up for the vote, right? Did you wanna chime in? Um, next up on our agenda is the Public Arts Festival mural presentation. Ryan, is that you or is that my, or is that someone else? Oh, Sharon, Sharon. himself. Oh, oh, great. Thank you. Self is here. They're here. They're here listening. They're also working on something else. So, um, they're not going to be on the camera, but I just, um, wanted to make sure we were both here. Um, hi everybody, I'm Sharon. Um, so I'm designing this mural that's gonna be on the um, parking garage uh, in the plaza where the Tuesday Farmer's Market is. And I know you all have been introduced to the project before. Um, so just to give you a little background before I give the presentation. Ah, okay, so this project um, is, a, is a community engaged mural process. So um, we had an input workshop um, on January 28th at the, um, at the Saturday farmer's market, the winter market at the senior center. And that's where um, the input and the ideas and we had, we had a lot of people participate. Um, and I think we collected like 60 surveys or something like that. And a lot of kids participated and there was, there was um, ways to participate through art. So that's where all the ideas came from. And Earlier today, so it's, it's a big feedback day <laughs> for this project. Earlier today, we met with the project partners from Grow Food Northampton um, and Community Action, and Jada was also there representing the Arts Council. Um, thank you, Jada, for coming to both. Um, and so we talked about a lot of different, like, you know, reactions and feedback and changes. So I'm going to show you the presentation as is, and then I'm going to share with you some of the things that, that, we talked about today, so you can sort of get up to speed. Um, and I'm not sure, you know, you, have, you guys have a lot on your agenda, but it would be great to even just get a, you know, a chance for you guys to give some sort of reaction or thoughts, and then you all can vote on it. And I just want to say, as you're seeing it, that there will be minor changes, but the vote is really on um, the general design as is, knowing that there'll be some changes that, that I'll talk to you about. Um, does anybody have any questions before I get started? No? Okay. Um, okay. Share here. You guys can see my screen. Almost. Okay. Present mode. Let's see. Oh. Okay, hold on one second. Oh, 
Okay. You all can see my screen, right? Thumbs up, somebody? Okay. I see some nods. Okay. Um, so here are some pictures from um, the market, some of the visual inspiration. Uh, and I'll, I'll try to go through this fairly quickly. Um, this was some photos I took of the actual feedback session that we had. Um, we had people doing some drawings um, and giving ideas. We had prompts about, you know, what does the farmer's market mean to you? Asking people about their memories and generally just their, um, their thoughts and feelings about the market and about local agriculture. Um, we also had a lot of participation from the vendors. Okay, so I'm gonna, this is the, there are four panels for the design. I wanted you to see them all together and then I'll show you what they look like in context and then we'll go through them a little bit more, um, a little bit more particularly and I'll show you some details. So um, this design, I took the picture on a very drab day <laughs> just the other day. So um, that's okay, but it's, it's a big difference between the color and um, just the, the light, but um, so we have um, winter, spring, summer, and fall are the different themes um, that this mural takes us through. Uh, let's start with winter. Um, so uh, some of the um, feedback we got um, about what to represent in the mural is people really wanted to see some wonky vegetables, some sort of irregular produce is the one thing that people really liked. Um, and these bright colors, um, as you'll see as we move through, um, sort of represent each season. So we have a lot of blue in winter. And then we go into spring and we have some abstraction going on here, some abstract asparagus clouds, um, some daffodils. There's, there'll be a change to that um, flower, which I'll explain after, um, and then a land acknowledgement. And this is supposed to be the Mount Holyoke Range. Um, it's, it's an abstract version of the range. This isn't exactly what it looks like, but really here this um, spring is talking, is, is really representing um, both the, the incoming uh, growth that's happening in spring, but really also the land as a whole. Um, then we have summer. And um, something I wanted to share with you guys um, is that something unexpected. Um, Jada, this is your second time hearing this today, Air <laughs> Trooper. Um, but something unexpected happened at the winter market, um, which is that one of the vendors came up to me and she had actually given me a picture. Um, she takes pictures and she was selling her her photo cards and things like that of, of a sunflower. So that's where this imagery came from. And um, she was like, I really didn't want to come up to you and I was nervous, but I wanted to know um, if you could include my son's initials in the mural because he took his life off of that building. Um, and that, you know, after hearing that, I, and so it's, it's a little blurry, but it's small in the mural. It's something like, I think you'd sort of have to know to see, but it's definitely there. Um, but that, had me, um, I ended up learning that, you know, that's not the only person that's happened to, and this is part of the picture of, you know, what this building means to a lot of the people in the community. Um, and I wanted to make sure that was represented in the mural. Um, so um, this is our summer. A lot of things are self-explanatory, the imagery. Um, and then we have um, fall. And um, I'll, I'll explain some of the changes that were recommended after, but I wanted to make sure you all saw it. And then I'm gonna go back here and uh, quickly just go through the list of some of the thoughts. We talked for a whole hour today, so we had a lot of time to really talk through, um, you know, some thoughts about the mural. Um, but folks had comments about the words. Um, and potentially wanting to either have less words or no words at all, um, partially because of wanting to be inclusive um, of folks that don't just speak English. And also there was some, you know, there's an abundance farm and this um, mural isn't associated with that. So that's one of the um, things that I'll definitely be changing and working on is what to do with the words. Um, and potentially taking some of them out and adding in um, 
there was a there was a request for so all the things in this mural mostly speak to the products of the earth um, and the things that we get from the farmers market and to include a little bit more about the growing process so even some sort of abstract things about the soil or growth or seeds or sprouts um, that that was great feedback too um, and these are all things that we can, you know, maintain the, the, the design and the big colors, but I can make these changes digitally. Um, so it's, it's not a big deal. Uh, and then a few things folks wanted to, um, the maple syrup feels like more like winter thing. So we can swap that out and make the mushrooms bigger. <laughs> that was another recommendation. Um, yeah, and to include uh, an indigenous, Daffodils are not indigenous to this land. So um, we're gonna swap that out for a flower that is. Um, and yeah, those were the main comments. So I'm gonna keep it up, I think, so that you all can look at it. Um, but I would love to know, and, and I know we don't have much time, so just maybe like five minutes or so, um, just ways that you all are connecting with the mural or any thoughts that are coming up as you see it um let's let's open it up and um then we if you have any other questions we'll make sure everybody is heard and then we, we can vote so um yeah please do participate yep go ahead you have thank we have you a sharon yeah. okay i'll let you facilitate from here <laughs> sure thank you sharon i just wanted to say thank you so much for the very thorough and also thoughtful presentation and um, I'm sure that everything you shared is one one hundredth of the work that you've actually put into it in terms of connecting with people and ideas and, and building relationships with those people to create this. That's really clear. So I just want to say thank you for modeling that. Um, I have a couple of questions, but I see some hands. So why don't we jump in? I see Aliana, you were up first. So why don't you either share feedback or questions and then we can loop around. Yeah, I just wanted to say uh, thank you, Sharon, for the render that you did. I think it like really shows how beautiful it's going to look, how colorful it's going to be, what a beautiful pop it's going to be in uh, in town. Um, and yeah, I love that you're going to be adding more native plants. That's great. And yeah, I'm all for it. <laughs> Jesse, you want to? Yeah, um, thank you so much for for being here this evening. Um, this this looks wonderful. I really appreciate uh, the feedback and thought processes that you're going through that you mentioned in terms of um, being more inclusive about uh, language. Um, the one I I I didn't realize until you ha had mentioned it that this is representative of the four seasons. Um, and so I'm just wondering if there's anything that might make that more clear, or if that even needs to be more clear, the white that looks like mountains in the summer reads to me as snow. Um, and actually the yellow and orange in the winter reads to me more as like summer or fall. Not that that means that you need to make any changes, but, um, I don't know if there's, those are things that have been brought up before that you've uh, talked about otherwise, but uh, other than those minor things, I think that um, this will be a beautiful addition to the parking garage um, exterior. Thank you. And I just wanna say, I'm just listening and taking in uh, all of your feedback. Um, and then the stage that happens after this is I'll make a final design and just incorporate you know, everything that I can that you all are saying. So I appreciate um, the positive and the, the, you know, the critiques are, are both important. So, thanks. Oh, Jada, you wanna go ahead? Yeah, I was, uh, I just wanna say uh, again, uh, echoing on what you said, Danielle, uh, Sharon, I think you, I think the world of you, and I really think that you really got out there again and again. And I appreciate, I mean, just even in, in talking with me, all the stuff that came about. And when I saw that, and maybe it's because it was on a dreary day, you know, the photo that you have, I just think it gives life, it gives color, and it's such an attraction. 
And I just want to thank you for the thoughtfulness that you went into all of this. And so I'm, I think this would be really great. Um, and uh, thank you. Thank you, Gita. So Sharon, I had a question that came up about um, the labor, right? So often when we think about farms and, and where our food comes from, we often dissociate the people who are growing that food. And in the same way that, you know, the farmers actually gave feedback of wanting to see more of the land and the soil, I sort of wonder if they're, I mean, it's not necessary necessarily, but I don't see that they're necessarily advocating for themselves to be represented here. And I wonder if hands or, you know, their tools or their boots or their, you know, if there are any markers that might evoke some of their experiences, one. And when we think about the population of farmers in the US as migrant workers, and then in this region, we're thinking about folks that are um, mostly Spanish speaking, like maybe there's a way in, in conversation with the folks that you're building this with to incorporate words that are in multiple languages, right? Are there indigenous farmers, indigenous seed keepers who are working in this region right now um, that have another word for healing or another word for connecting with land that could make its way here? Or is there a word in Spanish that is really meaningful to the folks that are gonna be setting up the booths and setting up the stalls and um, you know, seeing this every day? So that's just a question um, that might spark some interesting conversation with your collaborators. Um, and then the other sort of question I have, I, I really value and appreciate the small tribute that we made to the person who, you know, um, commit suicide here. And I guess I wonder if, like, if, my, if that had happened to my loved one in this space, I would find that very meaningful and very special to have um, the site be not commemorated, but have the site be um, treated as a space of real reverence and respect. Um, and I, I think it's interesting that the initials are in the memory section. Um, and I guess I just wonder if maybe through conversation with, um, there's a Pioneer Valley Suicide Prevention Task Force I wonder if they may have some, there might be an interesting group to chat with about programming, about what it might mean to like look at this artwork in within that context, um, or even like have a QR code that if anyone wants to like submit initials, I, I don't wanna make, I know that that's like making a thousand times more work and there I don't think there's like a database of friends and family of folks who, maybe there is a support group or a, a database of folks that have experienced this kind of loss. But um, I think if there's a way to open that invitation to others who have had this similar experience, it would be an easy add-on and it could be something really um, meaningful. And I just really appreciate that you found a way to incorporate that here and and the site specificity of it and the placemaking elements of it are really full and whole and, and, and special. So thank you. Um, I see Gwen's hand is up. Thank you so much. I did not know that I would be able to put, give any input. <laughs> um, anything I, I just said, I just said, yes, it would be wonderful to like acknowledge some of the history of the agricultural history of the, of the region. Um, and then also Nipmuc and Nonotuck, um, you know, I did see that it was mentioned on that and that's really great. But like connecting with those people and um, would be great. And I mentioned, um, there is history with the Wright family. It used to be lower farm or lower, it was a lower farm. And he, um, not that I would want us to paint any scalps on the building, <laughs> but uh, there's some of that history as well locally. And so I didn't know if, I don't know, there could be some kind of reverent reference to that in some way. Thank you. 
Eamon, you want to jump in? Uh, yeah, first, I, um, I, the color palette, I think, is really, really attractive. Um, I think this will be really nice for folks as they're walking around town to see. Uh, so I think that's great. Um, I love the idea of the seasons. Um, I share Je some of Jesse's feedback about um, if I didn't know the context, I wouldn't necessarily um, get the variations between the seasons from some of what we're looking at at the moment. Um, so I don't know if it's either uh, not labeling them, but so a little bit more visually, like kind of like uh, straightforward that these are the different seasons. Um, because I think you know, some of the coloring, you know, uh, choices, for example, like I think Jesse mentioned, like the winter necessarily doesn't read 100% as winter. Um, so, I, but I, you know, so I'm not sure what the, the solve is there, but something that just makes it a little bit more straightforward that, you know, these are the different seasons. Um, and then specifically in the top banner, the middle item, look like uh, what is, it looks like it's not next to the candle. What is that supposed to be? Or what is that? Oh, yes. Incense. incense? I'll, just, I'll show you a picture that it, it's brown. Okay. Um, can you see that? That's where it came from. But if that's not uh, reading, I'm listening. I'm sorry. Just yeah, I know. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So if that's incense, you know, I, maybe like a different way of, of indicating that. Cause I, you know, I, I think it's great that we're showing all the different kinds of things that are, you know, not just food that is, you know, located at the market. Um, but yeah, to me, I, and please, if other folks have a different take on it, but um, the, uh, yeah, I, I wasn't sure what that, what it was. And um, yeah, I wouldn't want it to want it to be misinterpreted as something um, that it's not. Um, but again, I think I'd, the I'm just blown. I, the color palette is amazing, um, and I think it's going to make such a big impact. Um, so I, you know, so a huge, huge uh, applause on that front for me. Sharon, I also love that you have these source images that are from the market. I think that's really special, and I, I just would encourage or or ask if it's possible to have a little. I know I keep talking about QR codes, but have a key that really explains all these details. Like you put so much thought into this. I mean, it doesn't have to be on the, not on the mural or anything, but just like to have a little handout that could live at the farmer's market that says, you know, this is a particular kind of grain that we have here, or this cheese is the kind of cheese that, I don't know. It's like obviously some kind of cheese that's meaningful to, to our region and eggplants grow in summer. I can stop, but I think it'd be great to give people um, uh, like a guide to be able to read the iconography here that might be a little bit less obvious. And maybe it's very obvious to the folks at the farmer's market, but in cases where it's more subtle, I just don't want it to get lost. Um, Jesse? Um, yeah, just quickly, I uh, in hearing what Eamon was talking about, I, I just want to also say that the tomatoes, corn, and peppers in the fall, um, those always are a little bit more summer uh, veg than fall veg. And so I think in trying to maybe reconceptualize a little bit, um, that might help bring the focus to summer, to summer, and maybe, I don't know what you would put in their place, but just throwing that out there as well. But I, I, I really appreciate what everyone has been saying this evening as well. I'm just gonna jump in for a second. Um, and then maybe we can take like two more comments. Um, but I just wanna jump in and say, first of all, thank you for all your feedback. It's, it's all really good and really helpful. Um, and it's good to have this sort of first round of folks seeing it and interpreting it. And I, and I wanna share with you just something that I haven't yet, which is that there's a level of abstraction in this design um, and also in the interpretation of the four seasons. So it's the, you know, the tomatoes and the corn, those are on the left side. So those are really leading from summer into fall. Um, and I, I, I totally hear you guys about like 
um, you know, it's wanting to make something clear. And I think the idea about having a QR code link, we're going to have a sign, like a little plaque that goes along with this so that there's totally a place for to include that. So if folks want to take it further, they can, or they have questions or they're curious, all that can be explained. And there's a level of ambiguity that's making people question, you know, like, what is this? And, you know, why do we have, you know, what kind of mushrooms are those? Like, I've never seen mushrooms like those. And somebody's like, oh, those are oyster mushrooms, you know, that, that kind of questioning and, and that there's some, some of that that's purposeful. Um, so I just wanted to share that. And just that I, I do hear all of you and, and everything that you're saying after this call, I'm gonna write down and add to the list um, and I'll try to hear everybody out. I also, one, one idea that I think was different um, was the idea of including, and it was, it was a great recommendation to include like um, some of the tools that folks use. I purposefully didn't include human figures in this. That was a choice. Um, just design wise and how I wanted to, you know, interpret this sort of prompt of representing um, representing the the farmer's market in the land, but I, I think it would be great um, to have some of those indicators, visual indicators of the labor that goes into it. Um, so yeah, I, I don't want to take up too much of your time <laughs> with this, with all the feedback and everything. So maybe we can just hear like, um, you know, just a few more comments. Does anyone else have any comments? Um, Sharon, just to jump in real quick, since you directly uh, spoke to my last comment, um, I, I totally understand. Maybe it would be nice because now that I'm looking at it, you know, I see like the flowers there, the, the leaves from there can kind of even be read as the leaves coming in from the left end of the summer section. So maybe like the corn can be something that goes from the right hand of the summer section over into kind of the left hand of the of the autumn section. And that would kind of like link things even a little bit more. And, you know, I'm now reading the squash going into the root veggies as really nice um, as well. Um, Thanks for that, for that suggestion. Any final thoughts? I do just want to share one more important thing. I'll be sad if I don't share it, which is that the next stage, um, we're doing this paint party. And I just want to say that once we get the, the promotional materials, um, flyers, et cetera, out for that, I would love the help of the Arts Council to share that and to try to get to as many people as possible to show up. Um, and also we'll be looking for some volunteers to help rolling out the paint and just being, you know, helpful on site. So I'll reach out about that, but I wanted to, to say that the date is May 13th, which is a Saturday, one to three. That's all. Thank you so much, Erin. Congratulations on putting this together. I know it's an epic amount of work and doing such a wonderful job. Um, okay, sorry, I'm just putting the date in the chat in case anyone wants it. So um, thanks everyone for weighing in on that. It looks like we have an update on performance for the PTO donation, Brian. Uh, Brian, I'm not hearing you're a bit garbled, so I'm just going to move on to the next agenda item. We should. Oh, here you are. Did everybody get the uh, financials on trans performance? Mm -hmm. So we have to decide what to donate to the PTOs. Can everybody hear me? Yes. Okay, good. Okay, good. Well, it was locked in the folder for me, so I couldn't access that. Oh, sorry. That's all right. Let me see. If... Oh, sorry. Are we are we meant to take a vote today, Brian, on um on the mural design? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. C can we do that? Does anyone would anyone like to move to approve? 
uh, or deny the move to approve the uh, the presentation of the murals. And I second it. Okay. And folks in favor? Uh, Jesse uh, looks. It looks unanimous. Awesome. Great. Unanimous. Pass. Thank you. Sorry about that, Sharon. Key part. <laughs> Well, thank you so much, everybody. Um, and I'll be in touch about the, the paint party. Thank you. Take care. Um, and I will share the financial um, form in case folks cannot see it. So here it is. So for this past year, the total income was about $20,222. $20, Our expenses were $7,200. And the total profit from this year's event was thir about $13,000. We have to keep in mind that those expenses don't include Peter and Stephen for staff. And Brian, for folks that are new, would you share where this money can go? Like, what can we do with this money? If it, some of it goes to PTO, what else is it used for? Uh, so we donate <laughs> a portion of it. If you looked in the past, you can see what we've donated. And some of it covers, um, you know, the RTZ, but mostly like we have to cover our staffing of Peter and Steven, which is, I don't know, it's about $70,000 a year to cover the two staff people. So we have to keep that in mind when we're we're giving money out uh, to grant rounds and to donating money. So um, just wanted to keep that in mind. So either RTZ or uh, supplementing our event activities and also buying ads helping support all the LCC things. For, for context, in years past, we raised more and gave more, but the range gifted was between like 35 and 45%, according to my iPhone calculator math. Um, so of the eleven to twelve thousand dollars that we usually that we've held on to in the past, um, Brian, you're saying that that's a combination that it goes to the RTZ as well as to fund the um, the employees. Is that accurate? Yeah, and just general expenses of uh, event production in general yeah. is there so, an, like artist it, fees and sure yeah go ahead is there an amount um that that would be inadvisable to go below for, uh, for well there's we donate to if you look at the ptos uh can you scroll up a little bit danielle you can kind of get an idea of the ptos that are Right there, okay. So there's, and then if you see the donations, the, 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 the JSB fund is gonna be something that, that is gonna be encumbered, so we can't touch, so it's $533. And then looking at one, two, three, four, like six, oh. Sorry about that. That's okay. Um, one, two, three, four, so six. So I wouldn't say just to be generous, I wouldn't go under six thousand dollars. So we can at least give a thousand dollars to those PTOs each. And for reference, um, like forty five hundred is the average percent. So we would be going over percent.
Well, actually, if we did a total of 6,000, it would be 46%. I don't know if other people have more questions about this. My first um, instinct is to kind of go 50-50 um, based on what we've given in the past and the amount that we have to give this year. That would be about 7,500. If you click on a tab below, you can see past years as well. That makes any sense? Is there another tab on this one or no? No, but 2019, 2020 are here. Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm in agreement with one. You said it was about 7,500 from. Uh... Oh, it's actually, it's, it's a little, 50% is uh, 6,500. Yeah, 6,500. We're splitting six ways, so. I have to look at this. Uh, that would be $1,083 per, per PTO. Um, I was originally going to suggest delegating 4,550, which was 35%, um, just considering that there are two other causes and one of those is staff, but Brian's suggestion was 6,000 or no less than 6,000 and Jesse's recommendation is 6,500. Well, let's take... Try, try to think about oh try to think about taking the 533 out of there so it's actually like 125 because that's encumbered the gsb fund donations and the income so line. this is a total of 1200 12500 yeah so if it's 12500 um then half of it is is a lot closer to 6000 6,250 is 50%. Question? I'm fine with that. Uh, me too. <laughs> Do we make a motion? Yeah. Um, well, what did we say? Was it a six, uh, 6,000 or 6,500? I wanted to make sure because there were three of them on the table and I'm quite, not quite sure. Yeah, it would be closer to 6,000. Um, be like 6,000. It's 6,250 is half of what we have, but there are six boards. So they'd be getting like 1,025 or something each. $1,041.67. Well, I'll second the motion because I want someone else to say it, um, but I, I'm fine with that. So, does, anybody, as, does anybody else have any questions or anything or any thoughts about this? Okay, then I'll do a, a, a motion to um, divide, well, to give the PTO share at uh, six thousand two hundred and twenty-two, or whatever that amount, exact amount was that, that Danielle mentioned. It's thirteen twenty-one point forty five five thirty-three divided by two, so six thousand two hundred forty-four twenty. And I'll second it. 
Folks in favor? Um, I can't see you. I'm just going to stop the share. Uh, my and Pete and Anna, your Anna's in. Okay, so we're we have a majority here. Um, Pete is in. We're just we don't have my. Okay, and Jesse, can you say that number again? Sure thing. So based on my iPhone calculations, six thousand two hundred forty-four dollars and twenty cents. Okay, I'm just putting it in the chat so that we have record. And that's 50% um, of our um, profit on that event. Okay, thank you. I have a quick question while we're on the subject of money. What, what would be the budget for the reception that we talked about earlier? It depends on what you're planning. So it can range. From and it'll probably be part of the work of the committee to find some sources of funding, whether that's through partnership or sponsorship. Or just come up with three ideas and then come up with some budgets for them, and then we can discuss in the council meeting. But be thrifty. <laughs> Sky's the limit. Understood. <laughs> um, sorry, I just lost the agenda, pulling it back up again. Um, next up on our list is biennial apology. So have folks had a chance to look at the document that um, Brian sent around? I can share my screen. This is the existing draft that was started in November of um, 2021 and has been on hold because of various quorum and other timeline <laughs> issues. But this is the version that um, folks worked on. Does anyone have any questions or comments? Guys. Uh your hand is up. Is that from the last vote, or do you have a comment about this? That was a mistake. I didn't mean to hit it. No worries. I just want to say, uh, guys, and again, someone wasn't a part of all of that. I think this is fine, what we have. I know we can just keep working and tweaking and tweaking, but I think it's fine as it is. I'd like to get something out. I think it would be more healing for me at least is to, to get this out and not let it keep festering and whatever for whatever reason. And uh I I, I think it looks fine. I agree. I I agree as well. And reading it over, I think it's you know succinct and it addresses everything that we had talked about wanting to address. And um it, lo it looks good to me. Thank you, everyone. Um, I, I have a question about sharing and distribution. So I guess I'm curious if anyone has any thoughts on how it goes out. I imagine it would be an email from Brian to all participants. Um, and I imagine it would be something that goes on our website and might be shared on social media, but just wanted to open the, the door for comments on how this is shared. I would imagine that a press release would probably also be prudent at this point. Mm -hmm. I don't know. What's your reservation? The headline is Northampton Arts Council issues apology and then the body of the press release is just the apology. Mm. I mean, I think we could send the document to press, but I just don't know. Like if I was writing a press release, I just I just wouldn't know what content beyond the actual document. Well, correct. Yeah, there is. What would be the downside of that? 
nothing. I just would maybe just share this with our contact list and not necessarily write a press release about it. It's just, it's just another layer of language about language about language. Is that, I, is that I, perhaps I, something that would be better suited as like an op-ed instead of a press release? I mean, this could run, this document could run as an op-ed if folks wanted that. It would be something that is submit to the newspaper and could be printed. If others would like to write an op-ed about this document or about the apology, then that's another. That's a, I guess another question. Um, as, sorry, Danielle. I was thinking that when you said the contact list, you were meaning specifically for the people that were involved with the biennial, and not also including press in that. I just wanted to make sure that we were including um, all of our press contacts so that we could get this to a wider audience than just that. Uh, just that list. Brian, does that make sense to you? I'll do what the council wants to do. So I can do either way. Just let me know what, what the council wants to do. I think you're right that the um, that doing a press release with just this as the body is a little strange, um, but I, you know I think that we should get this in front of uh, the press's attention, and if that is done by just sending this to whoever we have contacts in our um, you know database for, then that's great. If we have to go another step to be sure that this is actually getting in front of the right people, then I think we should discuss what that step is. But I don't know who our, who this contact list um, includes. I am not, so this is all recorded. This is all public record. I am like not at all concerned about um, media's ability to find this document. It's going to live online. So, but I think it's fine to email them. I, I would be more, and, and frankly, from a personal standpoint, I don't have the utmost faith that this running in the Hampshire Gazette is going to actually uh, like reach the people who we, who we excluded by failed outreach attempts, especially our local BIPOC communities. That's possible that, that reading the Gazette is going to reach those audiences, but I don't know that that the traditional media outlets that we use for every other form of communication with the public is going to get to the people that didn't know that we had a call for submissions, right? So if the goal of, of sharing this with press is to make sure that it gets in front of anyone who, you know, felt excluded, um, I think it's like a different, it's a, it's a different kind of beast. If the goal is to get it just in front of like Northampton community and kind of like the folks that are consistently part of these conversations, I think that whether we send an email to the press or not, it's going to be covered and 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 that audience is going to see it. Um, but but I do think that those who we did not reach are still not necessarily being reached um, by going that route. Agreed, and I wasn't. Um, I was assuming the latter rather than the former, that it was just another avenue to get the information <laughs> to the greater Northampton um, community who's involved with a lot of these things anyway. But, uh, you know, I think that we should have a dialogue about how we're going to send this and do more outreach into the communities that we neglected the first time around. So another thing that I will raise is once this goes out, I'm just like thinking about what community response will be. And I'm sure we're gonna get some positive response. I'm sure we'll get some negative response. I'm sure we'll get neutral response, but I just wanna, I guess, open that for conversation too, to see if there's, if, if like 
we as a council are saying that we're saying this, we're putting this apology out and then there's, are we planning to do further comment on it? Or are we putting this out and this is speaking for the issue and we're kind of resolved to move, move forward? Um, and I ask because usually I'm the one who gets emails from reporters, some really lovely ones, some really angry ones. And I just, I'm happy to say like, we said everything we need to, to say in this apology, or, you know, I guess I would love your support and feedback on how to think about the the after aftermath of this um, distribution. Uh, I would suggest that you know this you know there's you know a formal like one or two and like this is a response this is you know and like and then you know we're moving on you know so this is it we, we said we we everything you know, just refer them to this if they want to know more but this is what we did this is uh the response thanks for your interest and then you know because because my first before you said it my thought was it's going to be you getting all this so <laughs> and brian yeah. and brian too brian gets a lot of phone calls and a lot of mm. you know and has to say like oh well this is what the council did so i think it's just useful right. for us yeah to so i would just have like you know a standard one or two lines and like you know we refer you to the document. This is, you know, our final comment on the matter. You know, we are, you know, we look forward to uh, doing more for the community. That's it. Forward to realizing this vision together. Yes. <clears throat> Last line. Yeah. Or, you know, welcome them to start you know, to attend meetings and participate in, you know, putting on art events for the community. You know, maybe like, yeah. you know, they give them an opening to you know, be a part of future events and, you know, helping to make things, you know, more, you know, better and more inclusive, et cetera. I mean, we have seven bullet points that we are uh, putting up there as how we want to continue moving forward. And um, we're continuing to move forward with those in mind. And there's not much more to you know, comment on right now, um, because only time will tell whether we're successful in being able to do this. Well, I think just like for our own edification and not at all a pat on the back, but I would love to just look at these bullet points in the context of tonight's meeting. We heard uh, about Poet Laureate initiatives, we are a community proposal, and there are kind of some plans being floated for a potential artist engagement program. So maybe as like a reminder and a revitalizing uh, remark, we can just look at these, right? So does anyone, would anyone be willing to read these bullets out loud? That doesn't sound like me. It doesn't sound like you? Yeah, sorry, I like, don't I don't know. I'm kind of liking the Kathleen Turner, you know, thing that you, uh, you're doing. Like, you know, it's a great impression. Boy. I'll go ahead and read it if that's okay. <clears throat> We're committed to centering this equity statement. We will strive to ensure continued conversations around the issues raised by this biannual process. Accessible, community-based, and inclusive arts programming, equitable and diverse outreach practices flexible timelines that accommodate feedback and collaboration, transparent work processes and communication, authentic and lasting relationships and partnerships, diversi diversification and expansion of the voices on the council. We look forward to realizing this vision together. So gut check. Have we checked those boxes tonight? I think so. I think we're on our way or, you know, we're in the midst of it. And then I guess I would say like with, with confidence, right? That this is, this is 
a real valid statement. This is reasonable. This is what we're really actively trying to do. And maybe we can just all commit to referring each other back to these bullets as we're taking on new initiatives, as we're growing ones that we currently have on our plates. Um, and I don't know, any other comments, thoughts, questions? I think that the uh, equitable and diverse outreach practices is probably our, our largest hurdle as was displayed just in this conversation about how to get this out to the um, communities that we failed to reach out to before. So, you know, just to keep that as something in mind that we can all kind of continue to bring to the table how best to do that outreach. So I guess I, I would put forth, um, if anyone has personal relationships with the folks involved, are folks willing to make a phone call and say, hey, there's gonna be a statement coming out in the next couple of days and I wanna make sure you see it. It's gonna run in the newspaper or there's gonna be an email. That's one way or shoot a text or forward the email that Brian sends out that's to everyone, forward that along to folks who might need to see it. That's something that like we all definitely have the power and maybe capacity to do as a starting point. Um, but maybe let's just keep checking in. And if folks have other ideas about how to do that better, let's keep doing it. So if there are no other Questions, comments, bits of feedback? Would anyone like to move to approve this statement for distribution via our contact list and to press outlets and on our website and on social media? Well, I would make that motion, but that's a mouthful what she said, but I do. Um... I make a motion that this, uh, that our, uh, I don't want to call it our letter, but our uh, apology letter or our commitment letter, um, an equity statement be sent out to um, the venues that you just mentioned. But um, that's great. Would anyone much like rather to second it? <laughs> but since you can't uh, make the nomination, you said it best. Remember that. Second. Okay. Uh, just gonna call the vote. So we've got Eliana, Jesse, Garrett, Anna, Kay, Jada, Mai, uh, Amen, and Peter. If you are <laughs> guessing, we got a pause. Okay, so we're gonna a unanimous pass. So thank you everyone for uh, staying with us on the roller coaster that has been the process of getting this statement written. Um, we do have a um new business section of the agenda if anyone would like to use this time okay then on that note would anyone like to i guess we'll move to close the meeting i'll make that motion too <laughs> I don't, do, I don't know if we have to make motions to close the meeting. I think we do. I'll second it, I guess. Thanks. Okay. So vote. Yeah. Okay. We're closed. Yep. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Bye. Hope you have a great night and see you next month.